We're here at Dean Clough today to look at the work of a very influential Yorkshire painter called Doug Binder. Doug passed 70 this year, which puts him in the same generation as David Hockney and David Oxterby, who were giants of the pop art world in the 60s. Um, Doug was never a pop artist in quite that, the same sense. Um, over a varied and interesting career, he's been a hugely influential uh, animateur and support to other artists, but he's an extraordinarily good painter in his own right. Today we're looking at him as a painter. This one here is one I started on Monday, uh, which is two days ago, at the class that we have. Uh, and as you can see, it's, uh, well, I think you can see that it's at its beginning. Uh, I've just started thinking about it. I think I've more or less get, got something organised that I'm reasonably satisfied with at this stage. There's a long, long way to go yet, uh, as, there, as there is with, with all of these. You can see here as a different pose. What I'll do is take that pose, or as I've taken this pose, over three or four canvases. Uh, I think what is typical, uh, has been typical over the last, say, maybe 10 years now, uh, has been a sort of yellow green yellow amber glow uh, to some of the paintings which some people refer to the way they glow the way that the figures glow um, and they to them that's color to me that's tone um, it's the way I like to use tone uh, by by bringing in uh, those colors of uh, uh, that make it a sort of amber experience. Not there by accident, but it's there simply because I can control it. This one is the recent one, whereby I felt that the change in colour, this is a sepia, uh, um, which I think gives the body a warm, a warm sort of glow, uh, which I think can help uh, the if you like, appreciation of, of the flesh of the figure. I can go into the studio, do a certain amount of work on it, and the next day I can begin to work on it again, whereas uh, these earlier ones, the paint, because of the nature of the colour, dries too quickly uh, and doesn't allow that to happen. So the, the immediate future in terms of um, in terms of drawing will be to use this again and see where that takes me which is more exciting because it's more fluid I mean the whole thing is more fluid it means I can change it uh, I can get rid of it and start all over again if you like as, as you can with a drawing on um, paper uh, this, this one uh, I was pretty pleased with at the time, it was very quickly done. Everything, everything fell into place here in a, I was going to say a split second, but it almost seemed like that. Uh, everything fell into place very, very quickly. Uh, sometimes it works like that, it's almost magical the way that things work. And you know, almost from the first instance that just a, a, fr a fraction of the painting if that works I know then that I'm gonna enjoy solving the rest of it because I know there's a good chance of that working as well uh, similarly here I think uh, excepting I originally had this uh, face looking this way there's a profile there which just did not work. Uh, I can't understand why. Uh, I'm not a psychiatrist, uh, but I turned the head round, and for me now that works. That's a, that's a complete statement now that I'm happy with. This this one's interesting to me because um, I wanted to do this figure 
Um, I won't go into the reasons why, it's a long story, but I wanted to do this figure. And a friend of mine saw it and he said, uh, Doug, that's poor. That's, that's not working, that's crap. And I thought, right, you bugger. <laughs> so I thought, I've got to do six large paintings and show why it can work. And so this led to uh, this series. Now, we've seen the four, but these two are not, and they say, the work in progress. These two are, are not finished yet. Uh, the figures are nearly there. Uh, I have problem with, with space and putting and colour and so on. So those have got to be resolved. Uh, I'm, I'm reasonably okay with them because that's why they're on the wall. Um, these, uh, again, are studies that, that took me uh, a day and, uh, and, and some time uh, just after that by uh, making corrections and uh, slight adjustments. Um, this one here, uh, some people seem to prefer as it seems to have some kind of uh, dynamism going which is different to the kind of feeling and everything else which is very the mood the mood is very pacific uh very passive um which is what you get with a life model uh, this one seems to have uh, some kind of something else happening to it uh, and it's quite different in, in uh, feeling to, to the others. Uh, I do like the passive nature. Uh, I do like melancholy. A lot of my work uh, throughout, through the years really has been very melancholic, dealt with melancholy. Uh, something to do with me being, uh, I don't want to make any silly points here, but uh, uh, being an only child that you tend to make your own friends you know you don't necessarily have friends around you all the time and it's difficult making friends um, and so you intend to invent them um, and you also get quite melancholic or I did and uh, that's something that I've been uh, has been with me now for, for all, t all the time and something which I can use in painting. The, the sexual aspect uh, might be here with these um, and certainly for some people uh, some viewers uh, this is an obvious kind of uh, an obvious point that they pick up on uh, to me there's an awkwardness with that in that uh, I don't mind sensuality in fact I quite I, I quite love sensuality the idea of sensuality Sexuality is, is a, another number and uh, it's, it's something that I'm not sure about. Um, but then again, I'm, that's what I'm doing, I guess. Um, as, as, long as, the, as long as the sexuality isn't in any way glamorous, that's the main thing. Uh, I'd hate it to be glamorous, any kind of glamour in painting has got to be avoided at all costs as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm.